Hello, my name is Bailey Hillman. Welcome to Product Talk Tuesday. Today, we're going to discuss how to upgrade and downgrade activities, more specifically, downgrade. This, I find, is the most difficult thing for us as activity professionals to do. Let me explain what I mean. So whenever we take an activity and we're looking at um, engaging with all of our residents, a lot of times it's, it's easy and it's just natural to gravitate toward the residents who are up, uh, more independent, those who can communicate. The individuals that are more difficult to do activities with are those who are end of life or very severe stages of dementia, um, those who cannot communicate, those who might be aphasic, meaning they're not able to use their words or their language any longer. And so those are the residents I find that either activity directors and mostly activity assistants really have a hard time understanding how am I going to get this person to engage in an activity when I have bowling on the calendar or when I have a crossword on the calendar or hangman on the calendar. And so I want to use today our product talk Tuesday to talk to you about how we can help to downgrade those activities. So you're going to see our weekly compass on the screen. This is actually launching again today. So every Tuesday, a new weekly compass is launching. And so you can download this and utilize it. It's a packet um, that you're more than welcome to make copies of and use within your community. There is a ton of stuff in here. And this is great for independent living, assisted living, adult daycares, um, anybody, any level, memory care as well. And I'm gonna show you how you can downgrade some of these activities. All right, so let's take trivia or any type of activity with questions. Okay, so let's, let's just take an easy one like hangman. Okay, so, so let's say we're playing hangman and you have residents who are laid in reclining chairs or in broda chairs or those who are, are bed bound who aren't able to get up and you are wanting to do and needing to do an intellectual activity with them. Hangman, all right, that's a great fun, it's so much fun to do in small groups. So you would have the letters, uh, the lines all drawn out, maybe on a whiteboard, okay, with your hangman on there. Um, and then you would ask them the question. So if I asked you or I gave you a trivia fact, um, the entire fact, then it might be a little too much. Okay, so if I'm telling you, give me a letter, any letter, give me a letter. Well, you have a bunch of letters to choose from, right? There's a lot of letters. That's a really hard task for some people to do, to think of the entire alphabet, especially if they're end of life or especially if they've got severe dementia. So instead, I would say A or B, okay? A or B, give me an A or a B. Which one do you want, A or B? Okay, and then let them choose verbally if they can. If that is still too high, okay, so this is still too difficult for them, then you want to give them visual cues, okay? So you could say, give me an A or a B. Give me A or B. And if they look at one of my hands, okay, they might at that point say A or B out loud, verbally, but if they even look at my hand, A or B, and they look over at A, I'll say, oh my goodness, great job, A. Yes, there is an A and I'll put the A up, okay? So they're engaged. Even though they're not verbally communicating, they are still engaged in the activity, okay? They're still engaged. If I had someone that had their eyes closed, I would probably go up and do some compassionate touch on their hands and their arms, rubbing to try to stimulate them, and I do the same thing. Okay, Mr. Smith, give me an A or a B. A or B, what is it? Squeeze my hands. Okay, you could get them to squeeze your hands. If that still isn't working, okay, give them an A or a B, all right? Just help them to participate somehow. Mr. Smith chooses an A. He wants an A and go forward, okay? So give them some time though. So here's, my, here's the thing. Research shows that it takes 90 seconds 90 seconds. That's a very long time. That's a minute and a half. <laughs> this video is going to be way longer than 90 seconds. 90 seconds for someone to respond and actually receive the information in their brain, process it, and then respond. Okay. Even like simple tasks like going to the bathroom for an individual who has impaired cognition, okay, sitting on the toilet, it takes their body 90 seconds to even know sometimes that they're sitting on the toilet seat. And that's a warm toilet seat. So if it's cold, 
Okay, it's a warm toilet seat. They finally understand that they're sitting there and then they can go start processing to go to the bathroom. Same thing with activities, okay? It takes you not, it takes them 90 seconds sometimes to even get what we're saying. So if I ask a question, you know, um, what letter, you know, do you want A or a B? And I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and I can see that they're trying to engage. I mean, you can see it in someone's face. If I am thinking and my wheels are turning, you can usually see that they're engaged, they've got it, they're processing it. But if I start going, okay, you've asked me if I want an A or a B and I'm just kind of looking around like not knowing or paying attention, there's probably something wrong, right? I'm not, I don't get the question. I haven't, I haven't heard it. I'm not processing it. I am now out, you know, in left field. I'm, I'm not focused. So repeat the question, okay? Slowly, simply, A or B, A or B. Okay, and give them time to respond. We cannot go through this quickly. All right, if you work with individuals, especially, I see this all the time in nursing homes, and you're going to find over, if you're following me and, and doing activities in life with us at Activity Director Resource, you will find that this is something I am so incredibly passionate about because I have been a consultant in many buildings where I walk in and residents who are in jerry chairs, broda chairs, in beds, hunched over in, in wheelchairs, sitting in front of TVs for hours and hours and hours at a time. And when I go and interview the activity team or even the CNA team or restorative team, it's that, you know, we just don't know how. We just don't know how to engage. Um, and so if you are working with them, it will take you a lot longer. Your activities will last a lot longer and that is okay because you're giving them the chance to use their minds. You're giving them the chance to actually engage in an activity. Okay, so same things with trivia and facts. If I am there with the resident and present with the resident and asking them a, a question. So during the spring, birds are more vocal as they sing to attract mates and warn away rival, warn away rivals. Okay, if I'm reading that to someone, I would be physically stimulating them somehow. Okay, so rubbing their hand or their back or their shoulders, okay, getting them alert, okay, that I am talking to you. I am with you. I am present with you. Okay, you have to do this with this level of individual. Okay, if I was in this state, I would want someone to be there with me. Okay, if I'm trapped inside my body and not able to move, I don't want to sit in front of a TV. I want someone to sit and take the time to engage with me and help me to be successful, even in choosing an A or B for a hangman game. Okay, it's, it's really simple to downgrade once you understand the concept. On this, you could write up the letters, okay, and, and tell them. Okay, what is, what's colorful in the sky? What is colorful in the sky? You don't have to do anagram with them, okay? They don't have to put the words or the letters in order. Um, and so you can just get it and, and do more of a, a reminiscing thing, but I'm gonna show you something that's gonna be even better to go along with this in just a moment. Word search, wouldn't even worry about it, okay? Not for, not to downgrade. Crossword, you could, if you wanted to ask the questions and then give them two answers and let them choose the answers, that would be fine. You could do the same thing, okay? Giving, giving them verbal cues first to see if you get a response. If you don't, give them visual cues to see if you get a verbal response and then giving them a cues to see if you just get a visual response, okay? Um, you could even have, if they cannot respond or move their head, you could have them tap their hands or squeeze their hands. You can get a physical response from them. Um, so just downgrading the activity. Uh, spring coloring, I would do this hand under hand. So let me show you, I wish I had someone else here, but let me show you how I can, um, i got a butterfly here. So if I'm holding the pencil, okay, like this, I can wrap my, my other individual's hand over it and them and I can color, okay, and I'm getting all of the feeling of actually coloring. Okay? I'm, getting the touch of the, the pressure on the paper. I'm hearing the sound of the color pencil going across the paper. I can actually color. And then when I'm done, I could see how brightly colored something is. So you might color part of this for them. Okay, you don't have to do the entire activity with them. All right, so I wanna make sure that's clear. So 
sometimes like if I was tying my shoes, I might get it to a certain point and then allow them to do the end. So I might get this to a certain point and say, you know what, Mr. Smith, I need your help to make this just radiant and beautiful. Can you assist me in coloring this? Have them, okay, hand under hand. So you actually butterfly. So they'll hold the pen and then you're gonna kind of cup in front and you can lock thumbs. I can't really show you how to do it with just me, but you can lock thumbs and then you can guide, okay, across. So you can either be on bottom holding the pencil if they can, let them hold the pencil and you assist overhand, interlocking your hand to kind of guide. You want to always support the arm and the elbow whenever you're going back and forth across the page. Okay, you, you always want to support the arm so that you get good fluid movements with the, the individual, okay? Um, so that is coloring. Definitely could do this, okay? So you don't have to have them do the entire page just have them do the end. And some of your other residents may say, hey, you know, Miss Smith, do you want to color part of the page? And we'll let him, you know, color one of the butterflies so that you guys can do the project together. Um, great activity, okay, great engagement, conversation. These pictures were designed for individuals who are in stage, okay? These are designed for that. I mean, you can use them with all stages. I think they're beautiful just to reminisce and think about. Maybe someone that's cherry blossoms, maybe someone's been to Washington and seen them in April, and they can describe their trip and the visit, and it, wonderful, okay? However, um, my encouragement to you is to go get some of the wax melts and put the, color these in, in on cardstock and laminate them. And then put the smells, the flower smell, uh, wood smell for the grass, put some scents in a baggie, okay, with the picture in there and have them smell and look at the picture at the same time. Okay, you're using their olfactory nerves, right, to stimulate memories from smells. You're using their visual, okay, their ocular, you're, they're looking at something and triggering their brain on, oh my goodness, you know, I, I remember playing in the grass talk to them about what does the grass feel like on your feet, okay? Do you remember running your hands through grass with dew on it, all right? What about the little bugs crawling around in the grass? I mean, we can all picture that in our minds, okay? It's a sensory activity. Use visual, smell, touch, the thoughts and the reminiscing about the events. Perfect activity for someone who is in stage. I have done this with multiple types of activities. We've done a wonderful, in the building I'm in currently, we did a fall theme. It was wonderful. Pumpkin smells and, I mean, you name it, we had it. Apple pie. It was just, made everybody hungry, right? Did it, did it right before lunch and everybody ate great. Uh, so you can do all of these. You can either do smells or, or touch, okay, tactile things. <clears throat> so if you have some tulips, you can have them feeling the flowers while they're looking at the flowers and talking about all the colors. Wonderful activity, all right, wonderful. Asking them questions, open-ended questions. Do you remember splashing in the water? Okay, do you remember our kid, your kids splashing in the water? All right, did you ever catch tadpoles or, or catfish in a pond? I mean, tons of questions that you could just come up with. If you know your residents, which I hope that you do, and I'm sure that you do, if you know your residents intimately, okay, you know what they did, what they loved, their family, um, where they traveled, okay, what they did for a career and what tools they used, if you know them intimately, then this stuff will just naturally flow. Okay, it will naturally flow. And if you as the activity director don't know them, maybe you have some assistants that do, and that's fine. Okay, sometimes our buildings are so big and as the director, it's like, man, I can't keep up, right? And that's, that's okay, especially with skilled as they come in and out, but really task your assistants to be able to gather this information and hopefully they have a small enough group that they can engage with them meaningful uh, with those pictures. Reminiscing questions, okay, you can ask the questions, all right, as you're doing some tactile, okay, I do, I'm actually a master trainer for Compassionate Touch, and I would highly, highly encourage you to reach out to me to get Compassionate Touch trained, okay, if you are not, and you want to be a coach, I will train you, um, right now, I know we can't travel, and I can't be there, and we will figure it out, okay, we will figure out how to get you Compassionate Touch trained, it is a technique similar to massage, all right? It's hel it helps to stimulate the residents. It is phenomenal, okay? It's a wonderful, wonderful program. We actually uh, offer it in our building. And so 
we do this with our residents to help stimulate um, and either relax or stimulate them. There's multiple ways that you can do it. And uh, I would love to, to help you with that because this, this level of resident is definitely going to benefit from compassionate touch. All right, for sure. This is, this is them. And when you're engaging with them, that physical touch is so important. All right, so important. I know right now we've got COVID-19, but you know what? The CNAs and nurses have to touch the residents. Okay, they have to, to provide care. If you're guarded and you're in proper PPE and you're providing care, this is engagement. This is quality of life. Um, I would argue this with anybody. Actually, surveyors have been in my building. I'm like, listen, you're gonna see my activity assistants. You're gonna see my activity directors here because they're essential to me. Um, and they wanted everybody out. And I said, I am so sorry, but as the healthcare administrator, I believe that activities is just as important as medical care. And with a resident who is end of life, by golly, they don't have their family there. I will, my staff will touch them and love on them, right? They are not going to be end of life and possibly die alone. We are not going there. So if <laughs> I just say, and I hope that you and your administrator can be as strong, but my, my surveyors backed off, um, but I will tell you that that's, that's important. That's very, very important to me is the, the touch. Okay, they need to feel loved, especially when their families aren't coming and we're the ones that can provide that for them. Coffee filter flowers, okay, do your hand under hand. Okay, allow them to color. Listen to the paper, let them crinkle it up. Okay, if it's not perfect, it's okay. It's about the process, not the product right? About the process, not the product. I don't need Facebook pretty products for my residents who are, you know, end of life. I don't need that. I need engagement. I need purpose. Okay. That's what I need from them. So these are all your answers. And here's another set, another theme. This is a baking theme. Oh, I love those cupcakes. Uh, wow. That is what I want right now. Chocolate chip cookies, warm chocolate chip cookies. Okay. That smell. Oh, I can just smell it right now. I'm a sweetaholic, by the way. i terrible, terrible. It's actually a sickness I think I've got. All right, so let's get to cooking. This is wonderful to do with them, okay? The chocolate mug cake. It's, you can do this. They can stir. Again, hand under hand if you have to, or hold the cup, adapt it somehow where they can engage, all right? Even if they're smelling the ingredients, okay? Stirring the ingredients. They, holding the eggs, holding the sugar, touching and feeling things. Um, this one I would be very careful of right now, okay, with COVID-19, but you know, it's, it's perfectly fine for you to make them and have them right there with you, smelling things, looking at things, um, hearing the sounds of it, talking and reminiscing about chocolate cake, perfectly, perfectly capable of doing that right now, all right? That's, that is a good activity. Again, these residents who are low end of life. You might have a group of four. We can't have groups that large anyway. We're doing more one-on-ones. Okay. That this cooking activity takes like a minute, I think in the, oh, not this one, this one takes like a minute in the microwave. Okay. It takes literally seconds in the microwave, two to three minutes. Okay. Oh, it says cool two to three minutes. So 90 seconds, 90 seconds and you can cook it and done. Okay. It's super quick. This could be a great 15 minute activity. You have everything ready. You're letting them smell. You're engaging. You're reminiscing. Cook the cake. Allow somebody else to feed it. The CNAs can feed. You do not have your food handler's license as an activity assistant or you're not a feeding assistant. I would highly encourage you to talk to somebody about what are the rules? Okay, what are the rules for me feeding? If I don't have a CNA license or any other license that would teach me that if I'm not a, a food handler certified or not a feeding assistant. All right. And food handlers for sure. When you're cooking anything, okay. Food handler doesn't matter on you feeding somebody. You have to be a food assistant or a feeding assistant or have a degree to feed someone. And then your food handlers is so that you can cook things. All right. So be careful. You need to talk to your administrator about, do I need one of these? Cause we might not have them. When I came to the building I was in, nobody had them. And we were, we were definitely involved in food. All right. So this is Spanish. Okay, you could engage with the resident in learning new Spanish words, okay, laughing with them as you're learning new stuff. French, okay, German. Uh, these are, are great activities to sit and do one-on-ones and, and actually have some of this stuff. Like on this, when you're doing the cooking activity, hold the egg yolk and talk about 
the other languages. Did you know that this in German? I mean, you can go over that. The wooden spoon, have a wooden spoon there, okay? Have the, the flour, let them touch their own bag of flour and then toss it, all right? Flour's super cheap, super cheap. Social, write a loved one a letter and tell them what you like about them most. All right, you can do this writing to their loved one. Maybe it's the husband that's in the nursing home with you. You could write to their, their spouse at home and attach a picture of them doing an activity, all right, and send it in the mail. Snail mail is wonderful, okay? It's, it's so meaningful to get snail mail. If it's not snail mail, send an email, okay? Attach the picture, write the note, and, and send it off to the family. Draw or paint a picture for a friend and mail it to them. Okay, you could use the coloring sheet or you can have them doing hand under hand um, painting. They're able to do that. All right. You can even get different grips. So if it's just that they can't grip well, there's other grips. If you want to reach out to me as an OT, we use these a lot. Um, like pencil grips, you can get them online. Very easy to find. It will, it will widen your paint brushes so that the grip is better. Um, very good tip. Very good tip there. Um, who is your hero? What do you admire about him or her? If you know about the resident, this might be something that you could reminisce about. Okay, you might even ask the family prior. Who are you most grateful for? Okay, talking about their family. I know you absolutely love and adore your wife, right? She is such a beautiful woman. She makes the best food. I know you loved her cherry pies. Yeah, I know you used to love them. Oh my goodness, they tasted so good. And they a hot cherry, warm cherry pie with ice cream. I mean, engaging, talking about what they're grateful for. Okay, using sensory, anything visual, touch, smell, sight, anything that they can, they can engage with, not just our words. Okay, don't just use your words. Try to get tactile objects, things they can engage and interact with. That's gonna make their activities more meaningful. All right? Att let them attend church. If you, I'm going to say, if you don't think they're engaged or listening, you are probably wrong. Okay. I have been in so many church services from young people to elders. Okay. That they might look like they are sleeping and snoring through the service, but by golly, they know more than I did. And I was actually trying to pay attention. Okay. So let them sit through the services, read this Bible story to them, ask them the questions, help them with the answers. All right, these are, this is gonna help them with their spiritual. If they're Catholic, do the rosary, okay? Do, do the things with them that are meaningful. Pick each day a different area of wellness that you're gonna meet. So you don't have to meet all of these areas of wellness. You don't have to do all of these in one day. Pick one and do it. The exercise, now with somebody who is low level, okay, or who were downgrading activities, these activities may be difficult, but they might not, okay? You might be able to assist the resident in doing some range of motion on their legs. I'm going to caution you, okay? As the activity assistant or activity director, if you are not trained in how to properly do this, I would not do range of motion, okay? I have walked in, I have told my assistants before verbally to do range of motion. I have walked in and they were moving them way past the end field, okay? They were really stretching them out and they meant well, but they very well could have hurt a resident. And so I would highly encourage you to either get nursing or a therapist or someone to sign you off, okay? And I would have this in writing, not to get on to you, but I would have it in writing so that you can say, you know what, the therapist showed me how to do range of motion on this resident. And it needs to be specific to each individual. All right, if you see uh, warm red spots on their legs, that's probably an indication of a blood clot. You need to let the nurse know, okay? Don't massage over any of that. Don't massage over any wounds or move around legs or you know, try to get fluid out. Don't, don't attempt any of that. I know you would mean well, but sometimes we can do more harm than good if that's the case. Um, so I would highly encourage you to be very careful when you're doing range of motion and ensure that you are actually trained okay, before you do it. So all of these exercises you could assist or help them with. Cooking, okay, smoothies, if they're, they're most likely going to be puree or thickened liquids, you can make smoothies. Uh, there's some more recipes that you could do and help them to smell and engage and mix so you can pick uh, what, you would, what you would enjoy them to do. So that is all the time we have. I am so glad that you stuck around with me. You can tell I am passionate about this. I'm gonna keep doing these videos to try and help you understand how to upgrade and downgrade activities successfully with your residents. Please, okay, 
don't forget them. All right. Don't forget them. And if you need extra training, reach out to me. All right. This group of individuals is so precious. Okay. This time in their life is so precious that they need us the most. Our residents who talk and interact and engage, they need us too, but these residents really need us. And so my encouragement is to you, reach out if you need more education, reach out if your assistants need more education. I will put stuff together for you guys. Um, and so I hope this helps. Please like, share, let everybody know about our page. The more people we can reach, the more residents' lives we impact. That is what we're here at Activity Director Resource about. I want to impact other people's lives. I want to change your life as an activity director and make you the best activity director ever with skills that you didn't even know you had okay, and help you get over things that may not feel comfortable, like interacting with residents who are who are low level. And you may be an expert at this. And if you are, comment below. Let me know the things that you're doing to engage. I'm always looking for new ideas because it's hard. Okay, this, this level of care is hard. So comment below. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know if you have any questions. What products do you want to cover um, on our Product Talk Tuesdays? And thank you for always joining. Join us live Sunday nights, eight o'clock.